Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> Less than a second into the episode, we're already laughing. My name's Bianca Spears. I'm your host. This is Explore. I'm here with the amazing Dawn Bates. Dawn is an author, an international best-selling author, mind you, of three books. She's the mother to two amazing boys and two fur babies who are being taken care of while she circumnavigates the world. What a legend! Uh, <laughs> Dawn, welcome to Explore. You've been here before with your amazing son just a couple of days ago, actually. I have. Um, thank you, Bianca. <laughs> I'm glad to have you back. <laughs> Even though I'm we should be back. <laughs> tech issues have brought us together once more. Yay! Yay! Well. So, Obviously, <laughs> we've got work to do in this world, darling. Of course, we're back together. <laughs> so, dawn's in the dark. I've got a squealing seven month old in the background. Hopefully, the volume's not too high on that guy. Um, we're talking all things writing today, all things story of your life, basically. Um, Dawn is not only an author, but an author coach. And, um, Dawn, in your work, you really help people to draw out the stories from what they otherwise might have thought of as a boring or average life mm -hmm. um, and really transform themselves and allow their story to come through in whatever form it is, whether it's a book, whether it becomes a play, whatever it is, allow them mm -hmm. to share their stories and empower others in doing so. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, Dawn is absolutely a woman on a mission she's sailing around the world as i said um and i'll start with the big questions dawn what would you say that your mission is you're always talking about i'm here to do work i've got work to do what would you say your mission is i don't just have one mission bianca i have lots i have a mission to giggle every single day every hour that's like first and foremost if we're not giggling, there's something going on and we need to sort that out first off. So giggling is my ultimate mission. <laughs> and also to enable people to live a life they love and be inspired by who they are. You know, instead of looking outside of themselves for inspiration, inspire yourself. You know, and this is something that um, comes out a lot with uh, my clients as we're working uh, on their book whether it's to leverage their life or expand their brand and you know, create this massive vision that excites them so much they can't help but get out of bed at stupid o'clock in the morning or mid-morning or stupid o'clock at whatever time of the day it is for them. Um, and, you know, when you're inspired by yourself and your own life, yeah, that's, that's like... That's so magical. That is amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. So just a few few little missions that she's got going on there. Yeah. And um, save the planet, obviously. Because when you're sailing, you see a lot and it puts a lot of stuff into perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Raise awareness of what we're doing to the ocean because without the ocean we ain't we're not alive. We, we kill the ocean, we, we're, we're gone. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us something that you have seen that's really got, got you going? <sighs> got to do something about that. Oh, they read about it in my book, the, one of my books, Mermaid's Guide to Hitchhiking, because in that series of books, I'm writing about the environmental impact that sailors have. Sometimes when I'm in marinas, I just want to walk up to some of these boat owners and just shake them and slap them. But come on, wake up. You use this as your playground. You know, people that go on the beach, you know, cigarette butts. Do you know how dangerous, like, the, like come on, stop polluting yourself and everybody else as well as the ocean. But when I, I mean, I, we were what, five, six days away from land. I think we were somewhere between New Zealand and Vanuatu. Um, and, oh, there goes a Castrol GTX 
engine oil, plastic container floating on by, and I wanted to go. I was like, right, come on, let's go get it. Let's just go and haul it in. The the yacht owner didn't want to do it, and I'm like, what? It's just like, let's just get it. Didn't want to. I was not. I I had to go journal. I had to go journal because boats get smaller every day. And if you don't if you don't have a lot of journals when you're on a boat, people, there might be a mass murder. Seriously, <laughs> save your sanity. Take a journal to see and to make millions because I tell you what, the ideas you get when you're at sea, oh my days, they come thick and fast. Mm. Good tips. What other tips would you have for people who are sailing around the world or want to? If you get seasick, don't go. <laughs> That's kind of a bit of a blunt thing to say, but the re a couple of reasons why, if you love roller coasters, pretty much you'll be cool at sea. If roller coaster, if the motion of roller coasters, this is my true hiring tip. It's going to be one of my questions um, when I hire my own crew. Because the thing is, if you can stand the movement um, of being on a roller coaster, then you, you should be able to handle the sea. Also, do get some hypnotherapy if you do get seasickness. But just remember that if you get it really badly, you can be, you can be a massive liability. When mm -hmm. things go south, if they go south, hopefully they won't. But if they do, and you can't do anything because you're lying around feeling sick and sorry for yourself, you are putting the lives of everybody else on that boat at risk. I sailed with a, a woman, and honestly, uh, I nearly gave I nearly gave her to the sharks myself. She was just such a liability. Uh, she just she was only doing it so she could say that she sailed mm. from here to here. It was all about her ego. So that you know me, I don't do ego. I don't like it. We're all the same. If I kick you, you're still going to bruise. Let's just be honest. Um, and I do mixed martial arts, so I will kick you hard if I have to. But when you're sailing, it's not about ego because the ocean, she's a leveler. She doesn't care how much money you've got. She doesn't care about your job title. She doesn't care what color your skin is, where you're from, what you've done. You know, and that's why I love being out on the ocean because she, oh, especially with people who get it. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're not out there to be egotistical. And when you've got people on there, on a boat that are just there to say that they're sailing, darling, mm -hmm. and they get seasick. Don't sail with Dorney B. Don't. <laughs> don't put those people on my boat. Yeah. So you've it's had sailing. some ups and definitely some downs while you've been sailing. Mm -hmm. um, you've had one instance, and I think this goes to show the power of writing in sharing a story. And you already know what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> um, yeah, there I was an instance where you did go overboard. Um, not only that, but actually lost your front teeth because of it. And yeah. Ooh, in, these reading, are not real. in reading that story um, where you're describing what went on and the tumultuous ocean that you guys were trying to deal with at the time, um, mm. which was why you're out there in such rough conditions, you know, why your teeth did get smashed out. Um, but reading that and going, wow, like she's in this crazy situation. She's hanging off the side of a boat. And then you wrote something like, I felt the, like I could feel the pieces of my teeth in my mouth. And I spat out the crumble and kind of got on with the job at hand, to paraphrase what you wrote. Um, one, wow, what an amazing thing to live through and what an attitude to have of just like, holy shit, my teeth have just broken, which was not something that you took lightly at all for anyone who hasn't no, heard or read the story. No, it wasn't. Um, it was something that Dawn found quite devastating. But to go, <laughs> spit those out, let's get on with it. Um, well, there was nothing left. There was, it was just chalk. It was just crumble. It was, it was just like dust. It really was. Um, and it was, 
I mean, the six metre waves and the 40 knots of wind, uh, the captain should never have taken us out in those conditions. He should have made the right choice um, mm -hmm. or a different choice. Um, I mean, going up on deck in those conditions, you know, you're, you've got your life jacket on, you've got your lifeline on, and, you, you know, you're, and what it was was a combination of this huge wave coming over on the deck and us hitting another wave um, and the fact that it was a brand new boat and the people who designed this boat who um, <laughs> will be getting quite a strong review of their boat from me they had put it so that there was a window right underneath where you stand so with the wave coming over on a brand new window slip like it's dangerous they don't they don't even have grab rails on their boat um, and um, so I'm actually learning a lot more about boat design so that mm -hmm. I can actually go back to them and say, right, this is what happened. These are the specifications. And yes, you hit German safety standards, but I lost my teeth. And the thing is, when, you, when that kind of stuff happens, it's like anything in life. You can either just sit there and cry or you can go, you know what, there's work to be done. We've got to get these sails in. We've got to get them lashed down. We've got to get back in the in the in the companion in that thing. In the I don't even know what you call it. It's just where we all fit. <laughs> yeah. The little the little hut that's fun. Yeah. You know, where we all sit and have a lunch and some people have their G and T for lunch and things like that. Um, the, the wheelhouse on a traditional ship. This was a plastic, fantastic carbon thing. Um, and um, so we all went back in there and got the job done. But if it wasn't for Lorenzo, I wouldn't be here. But what went through my mind, other than the fact was, oh no, I've lost my teeth. I do lots of live streams and TV work. I've got no smile. I'm not going live like this. <laughs> I need to get my teeth fixed. And then Lorenzo said, oh, do you want something to eat? I was like, oh, you know what, I fancy. And it was an avocado, uh, a, slice of avocado uh, like a slice of toast with smashed avocado with some seeds on the top. Like, oh, hold back on the seeds, it might get stuck in the teeth. And it was that, you know, relearning to eat while you've got no teeth. Yeah. You know, like you're having, you're having to eat on the side of your mouth and you're just like, oh, can't even do it. And having a hot cup of tea. You know, thankfully I've got my teeth rebuilt now. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but yeah, it was, and the, the other thing that went through my mind is I, I'm a mother. I'm not dying now. I've got work to do in this world. I'm not dying. Mm -hmm. I've got work to do. I've got people's lives to impact. I've got awareness to raise. I've got two boys that are watching me. Get back on the boat. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. And then when I messaged the boys to let them know that I was okay, um, and they're like, oh, are you coming out? I went, no, no, we're going out sailing tomorrow. We've got to get the boat delivered. And like, they've come back and go, you're awesome. We're so proud of you. And I was like, and I didn't get it because for me, it was just that like a job needs to be done. We're delivering uh -huh. the boat. Yeah. And I'm like, well, why, why, why is it? And I, I honestly did not get it for ages because in my world, it's like if you say you're going to do something and the job needs to be done, you do it. Mm -hmm. you say you're going to do something, have the integrity to do it or get authentic and clear on why you're not going to do it or when things, why things are changing so that everybody can adjust and everybody can work harmoniously together. No, there's no ch problem change in your mind. Just get clear with it mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent agree on that it's about communication it's not about just seeing it through because you've decided and that's that and it's never going to change which although i did want to go back outside then <laughs> i did <laughs> um Get I want to talk to you about the writing process. One of the first things that I knew about Dawn Bates was that she'd written a book in seven days, which I was like, who the fuck is this lady? Um, and she was like, oh, we were in a shed, like a 
mastermind group, if you will, on Facebook. And mm -hmm. Dawn's there and she's like, I wrote it in seven days, I'm writing my next one. And I was like, who is this powerhouse? What is she doing? We ended up connecting and chatting and becoming friends from there. But I want to talk to you about the writing process and we'll get into that. Firstly, I want to mention the length of time to write a book because I know there's all kinds of different ideas out there. Some people take decades. Some people take days or weeks. Um, what is your process or what is your belief around what needs to happen to get a book out there? Okay. First of all, you have you have to decide that you're not just going to write a book, but you're going to publish a book. Mm -hmm. You can write a book and it can stay on your hard drive forever and a day, but unless you're actually going to do something with it, you know, unless you're using the book as a healing cathartic process and getting something out mm -hmm. of you. I've had clients that have written the book that have done nothing with it. And for mm -hmm. them, this, which is why when I do my seven week author course, I'm like, it's your first draft down. Yeah. It's not about getting it published. It's not about getting it to international bestseller status, which was my original concept. It is just about getting that first draft down because by the time we've gone through that process of writing the book and getting present to who you are and what the book actually means and what it means for your life and your business because we work on the author life. Mm -hmm. What does that actually contain? It's not about writing a book, although that is the, the transformation process that I go through. It is about what is this book for you in your life and what is it for the world. Now, once you've established what that actually is, I mean, yes, I wrote Wallahi in seven days and seven days later, it was an international bestseller on three continents. And I went, excuse my, like, wow, what the heck? How did that happen? Well, obviously I know how it happened because there was a strategy behind it. But still, you know, 14 days start to finish. But with that book, that was... Um, that was a very different book. That was about li what it was like living out in Egypt during the uprising. And I knew mm -hmm. what I wanted to say. I knew how, and it was just like sit down, 7,000 7 to 10,000 words every single day, 77,000 words done by the end of it. Um, with my first book, um, and this mm -hmm. is why I say to people, never ever compare your book to somebody else's because my all of my books i mean the book that i'm writing now that has been an ongoing pro i mean since i started writing that book nine months ago i've written another book i was like oh i'm gonna write this book and i've just smashed out another thirty-five thousand word book in the last two weeks um which will um come out soon um yeah. and the other thing is the first book that i wrote I didn't really know what I was doing. I knew I was going to write a book because I was so sick and fed up with answering everybody else's questions. First yeah. of all, it was like someone said to me, it's just a collection of articles, Dawn, this is not a book. I was like, a bit rude, it's a book. Um, and then I looked and I reread it. And then I was like, oh, okay, I see what they mean. And so I then rewrote that book. Mm -hmm. The third book I wrote, which was the end of the trilogy, um, that needed to wait a couple of years because we were waiting on results of court case. So we mm -hmm. had to wait for that book, but that was just in flow all the time. Plus I was studying human rights law, criminal law and family law. I did a, the equivalent of a six, seven year law degree in two years whilst writing a book and building a business and writing Wallahi. So there was a lot of stuff going on and, and raising a family and yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a, uh, and getting my green belt in mixed martial arts. Thank you. Hello. And also swimming, um, raising money for charity and doing lots of other cool stuff that I love doing. Um, so each book was really different and your book will be different. People who take about 10, 15 years to write a book, I have to ask myself why it's taking you that, that, that long. Really? Because even if you're studying a subject, I mean, like I just said, I was, I mean, I know I'm a fast learner. I know I internalize information really quickly, but even if you're doing a PhD, which can take up to six years and you're using, and this is something that um, 
I'm finding a lot more people are coming to me for, I want my PhD to actually mean something. So we're actually, I'm coaching them whilst they're doing their PhD. Because um, instead of doing a course with me, they're dipping in and just having the odd hour. Um, mm -hmm. And it's about when you're studying a subject, it does take a little bit longer to write the book. But if you know your story and it's about you and it's autobiographical and you are just sit down and write it. That's why the seven-week author course has been designed in the way that it's been done. When you look at your vision for the book and when you look at why you're writing it and you're really in tune, I have, I've created something or I've named it I didn't create it, I've just named it the conscious unconscious creation process. Mm -hmm. And when you step into that space, boom, you can't help but write. It's just anything comes between you and your laptop or you and your paper, that's it. It's just like, get out of the way. I'm in this zone. And people, when you're in that zone, nobody wants to interrupt you, ever. So, yeah. Any tips? Can we get a little how to? on how to get into that process? It's different for everybody. It just, again, it's like, it's understanding, um, I mean, it takes me a couple of sessions with a client to really tap into what it is that will get them into that space. Mm -hmm. But I've had people who can't write around, you know, just the music being on in the background, to being able mm -hmm. to write in the middle of a really busy cafe. Yeah. Um, and one of the things I say to people is when you, um, before you start writing, what is it you're writing about? Really tap into what is it you want to achieve today? What is it that you are going to be writing today? And I want, I, I get them to tap back into a time when they were so focused. Um, and then we embody that emotion or that sensation that they were going through, what it was that they were fo so focused on. And I, and I just get them to tap into that. And how they do that will be a very personal thing. Yeah. So it is about knowing who you are and, again, clearing out all of this stuff that's in the way. When you're a coach, Bianca, it's mm -hmm. when you get present to what's in your way, nothing stops you. Whether you're on, on the boat in six meter waves and 40 knots of wind, you know you've got a boat to deliver. You know you've got children to get back to a uh, parent. You know that you've got work in this world to do. You get back up on that boat and you get sailing. You get those sails in. Whether you are going to be writing a book, you know why you're writing the book. You know who you are. You know what your focus ground is. Nothing's going to stop you. So it, I like to say it's different for every client. Yeah, so it's about building the focus that allows you the momentum to mm. get it out, even if it's the first draft. Like you said, there's so many reasons that people write a book. Maybe they don't want to be an author. Maybe they just want to write their life story. I've thought time and time again of interviewing. I did a project when I was in grade seven, so about 12 years old, in end of primary school. We had to interview someone who was kind of older probably 50 plus or something and ask mm. them about what it was like for them growing up and you know what they did for fun what kinds of foods they you know typically had for dinner in their home when they were growing up and and things like that so I interviewed my grandma and I interviewed one of my uncles and it was mm. really interesting to me and ever since then I've had this thing in my mind like I should ask people about the day-to-day -day things I think now that I've had Julian like I think you know, for him to understand even what it was like for my parents growing up or, you know, my partner's parents growing up, let alone my grandparents as well, um, mm. to just find out about those, even in those little things, you know, I'm sure it's going to blow every kid who's born this year their mind that computers weren't around and, you know, phones oh. weren't smartphones and they had cords and, all that kind of stuff. And the five-inch floppy disks were actually a thing. They were five <laughs> inches, They were floppy. Like, my boys yeah. were like, what's a floppy disk? I'm like, what? And my what dad... What's a floppy disk? 
<laughs> don't think you can go and write a whole sentence as a file title. You've got eight characters and they're all numbers. That's how old I am, folks. You know. And my dad always um, used to encourage me to ask my grandma, his mother, who has passed away, to ask her questions. And he said, when she dies, her stories die with her. And unless they're shared, that's very true. It's mm. very true. This is the thing. When I, like I said, depending on why my clients are writing their books, there's one of them that is writing um, the family story. Fascinating mm -hmm. family. Like, why are these people? Like, we've got families that grace the TV. I mean, I don't watch TV because it got so full of, like, what, why, why are they on my screen? Why, why are they on every screen kind of thing? Like, who are these people? Just switch them off. You know, and you've got amazing families out there doing amazing things. And unless people write it down and create a legacy, because it is a legacy, it's a time capsule of our time, mm -hmm. you know, and it will always be in print. Once it's registered with the British Library, and that is for every country, every English-speaking, uh, every English book that's in print registered with the British Library. It doesn't matter whether you're in Australia or in America, it's always registered with the British Library if it's in English. I didn't know that was a thing. Wow. I, I was amazed hunt across Amazon and things like that? Um, well, I, I, I get Linda to do that. Um, I go, Linda, there's a manuscript. No, it, there's a process. I mean, it's the ISBN uh, numbers. You've got, the, you, you've got to register the copyright with somewhere. Um, okay. And so, so there's... There's a whole legality thing There's uh, about how, for example, if you've got a business idea, you would also still send that. You know, it's like, you know, the wax seal that you used to get in olden times. You send yourself something and stamp it with wax. It's like when you've got a business idea and you email it to yourself um, so that if yeah. you then share it with somebody else, these are, the, these are the, the cheats that we use in business. So if you've sent a contract to someone else before you send it to them, you send an email to yourself with your business idea so that if anybody then goes and runs with your ideas and just tries to pass it off as their own, you go, I'll actually, I sent you this email before I send you the email. And yeah. That's my idea. Yeah. So, and then I sent it to you. Yeah. So again, it's, um, but I don't even know where that, that, oh yeah, so the legacy, so some people do it as a legacy, some people, like with the sacral series that I'm writing, it's a series of nine books, I know that's going to be a podcast discussion, I know it's going to be a stage show, um, I was talking yesterday with somebody about it becoming, to, to paint the nine images, because in this series of books you do have a lady who consciously creates um, paintings, she consciously un like she she steps into this unconscious zone for about two or three weeks and she paints these nine paintings and then i'm using nine real life stories of sexual trauma and rape and weaving them through a piece of crime thriller because there are some people that have excuse me that have wanted to do write their story but they know they can't write that story because of the implications it will have on their family or mm -hmm. on a certain part of their life and so instead of them going public with that I'm now using their stories to weave them in through my first crime thriller series um, and we're then going to go on and do that so again why people write books is very different I've always want, I, I'm a crime thriller addict I will read a crime thriller novel in a day sit me mm -hmm. down and I'm the book's done by the end of the day I'm like oh, I need another one now <laughs> so where do you get your inspiration from for books then because you've obviously written a wide range of books from personal accounts on things to things that have taken a lot of research to like just mm. talking about like a crime thriller interweaving you know personal real life stories where do you get ideas from do you know what i wish sometimes no i don't wish that at all i'm not putting that, that out there in the, in the universe Keep them coming. I get ideas from everywhere. 
I, I even had to start a short stories group on Facebook, uh, which is short stories with, with Dawn Bates author coach, by the way, just for those who want to search. Um, because I get like, oh, that, that, I've got to go write that. Um, and they're all short story bursts that, you know, I could, I could be here and, you know, there's, I'm in Spain at the moment, guys, and those of you who know Spain, there's always a building site somewhere. You know, I watch what's going on out there, regularly have what they call a Diet Coke break. Um, and, um, you know, the ocean's just behind it with all the palm trees. And I'll see something and then, woof, there goes a short story. You know, and it could be, I have read a quote on the side of a building before and used that quote in the story. I, I have read something, so for example, yesterday I'm reading The Fifth Miracle by Paul Davis, which is all about biogenetics and, you know, life on Earth and did it come from Mars and genetic genomes and things like that. I absolutely, I, I get my geek on proper. I love it. This is just my sunbed reading. You know, lounging by a pool and reading biogenetics. Um, and I was like, ooh, I wonder where that could go. Mm. And then my mind goes. And it's just how it is. I wrote a book about business espionage because I was reading Gary Hamill's Leading the, Revolu uh, Leading the Revolution. I ended up with a book about business espionage, and a story about, yeah, and I'm just like, I could be cutting an orange and ginger for my water. And a murder mystery will come out of it. <laughs> Inspiration for everything. I love it. And I Absolutely. kind of anticipated that you would say that because I feel like once you're in the zone with something, you're in the zone. Like, mm. And it gets easier and easier and ideas just flow and they just come. Mm. Um, I've always done it though. Always mm. been able to do it. Yeah, I remember when I was teaching out in Egypt, um, I get the kids just to give, like, because I was teaching from uh, the foundation years, like four and five, they were the best they were. I got to play every day. Um, and then like, all the way up to 16-year-olds um, and adults in, you know, the big corporates teaching them business English. Um, we... Um, I'd get them to give me two or three words and I'd write them on the board and I'd be like, right, okay, these are the words for the end of the day's story. You want your word in the story? I suggest you get all your work done well throughout the day. And they'd be so happy to see a word that they could get to choose, weaving into a story. My boys, when the power cuts would happen in Egypt, or we'd be sat by a camping, or we'd be driving on a road trip. But right, give me two words, each of you. Just two random words, boom. That's story for the evening. Yeah, I've always done it. I love it. Awesome. Mm. It's so good to be inspired by the little things and be able to extrapolate those as well. That's cool. I think it also comes from gratitude, being grateful for the little things, you mm -hmm. know, because the little things aren't the little things. Look at the deserts. They're made up of tiny little grains of sand that make a big, massive desert. When you are grateful and inspired by the little things, there's so much joy and abundance in your life, and you can create such amazing things that why would you not be? Why wouldn't you be grateful for everything? Like your pen running out. Oh, I get to go buy a new pen. Yay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I am. <laughs> I just, like, I get excited by little things like that. My pen's run out. Woohoo! get to use another color now that's awesome I freaking love pen shopping i was looking at our pens the other day actually thinking that <laughs> like i want some new pens wow because i'm going to be at sea it for 84 days i mean i set sail in 37 days not that i'm counting or anything but i yeah. really am um i'm like okay right how many pens on average do i use hmm. 84 days okay so i'm gonna and i I always journal in a different color every single day. So I'll have like about six or seven different colors and each day will be a different color depending on the mood I'm in or what I'm journaling about. So I'm like, okay, right. So, that's, so I need to take at least, at least 28 pens with me. Okay. So 
and I'm going to need at least all four journals, at least four journals. And that's in addition to the ones I already have. Because I've got, I've got five journals at the moment. Um, I always have at least three journals on the go at once. Uh -huh. One for business ideas, one just for heart centered, like pouring it all out, one for money manifestation. Um, so I know, you know, so I've got to go and get another four journals. So, yeah. Awesome. And, yeah. and we stop off in a couple of places, so I might be getting journals when I get down to the get there. I really should have a stationery shop all to myself. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> oh. <gasps> There's an idea. Been inspired by life yet again, people. Live on the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah one second oh that would be amazing watch this space miss spears mrs spears, <laughs> miss spears. awesome you're like i'm writing it down right now awesome. it's written it's done <laughs> dawn it's been amazing to chat to you um I know that we could chat for easily another hour. Yeah, and I've got jet skin. <laughs> we always finish with a laugh, as you know. Yeah. And I can't even remember what we did. <laughs> what we're going to do. Oh, I know what happened. We didn't even choose a laugh last time. We just actually both started cracking on laughing. <laughs> we did, didn't we? We did giggle. Um, what we're going to do is story of my life laugh. So this can be <laughs> so many different ways. Um, but basically what we're going to do is imagine something that's happened in your life. Uh, we're going to go with, yeah, just something that happens to you all the time. Like, oh, story of my life. I always get the best car park. I always meet the coolest people I always you know have the best things let's not go with, oh the story of my life I always miss the bus yeah I was really like really Bianca we're not going there like uh, what is that it's not who we no, are no, no, no. it's not who we are darling yeah. <laughs> that's why when I said it I'm like story of my life I'm like that could definitely be a downer kind of thing but whatever <laughs> So, guys on the line, why why are we laughing? Firstly, Dawn loves it. Secondly, I love it. Um, <laughs> thirdly, laughter is so beneficial for all areas of our wellness, like mental, mm -hmm. emotional, physical, spiritual, social well-being. Um, and we don't often get a chance to have a really hearty laugh. So, I've made sure that every time you watch or listen to Explore, you get to chuckle along with me and whatever legend I have on the line. So. We're going to imagine, guys on the line, play along. We're going to imagine something's just happened that's freaking amazing. And we go, oh, story of my life, that always happens for me. And we're going to laugh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, know, you just do this anyway. You just giggle anyway because that's what life is. It's just a giggle. Geordie yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> B, where can people find you if they'd love to connect? <laughs> oh, you know, they, <laughs> they can find me on Bookface. See, I even, I've even changed Facebook. I've called it Bookface. <laughs> so those of you who are on Bookface, um, <laughs> at Dawn Bates Author Coach or Dawn Louise Bates, they can find me at, on Instagram at Dawny B, which is D-A-W-N-E-E-B-E. -E -E, thanks to Twitter. Um, and um, all those years ago, and um, where else? Oh, yeah, dawnbates.com. That's another place you might be able to find me. <laughs> and they can actually go and read the story about the teeth as well if, they're on, if they go to my blog yes, on Dawn Bates. on the website. It's, it it's literally called website. something about teeth, so you can find it there. You'll know the one when you see it. 
And also uh, on Facebook or Bookface, as however you prefer, uh, <laughs> has the group that she mentioned earlier with the short stories. Um, tell us once more what that's about, Dawn, or what's it called? Yeah, that's short stories with Dawn Bates, author, co author coach. And he said author course. Author course. Yes, and there's a seven-week author course, which you'll find out about through Dawn's website or if you follow her on Bookface, she does. <laughs> everyone when it's coming up because it's freaking amazing. Beautiful. Yeah, we'll be running the next one next year, so there's no more this year. I'm going sailing. January, January, it's coming. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Watch this face. I've got to do my 21 day vision creation before I set sail though. We kicked that off on the 9th of September. That's awesome. Do you want to be? I hope we talk again soon. Let's do it. We will be, my darling. Um, guys, amazing. thank you so much for tuning in. Dawn, mm. thanks for joining me yet again. You're welcome. <laughs> thanks for tuning in, guys. Have an amazing day. Remember, live to laugh and laugh to live. It's the only way to live in abundance. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. Ciao for now. <laughs> Bye.